have up with us today, Dr. Yolanda Geary. She is no stranger to the all Northern community. And when I say no stranger, even though she has not been on, we fought hard to get her on. Um, and our, we had such a scheduled conflict. However, the delays were not, certainly not a denial. So we are certainly excited that she could join us today and that our schedules finally aligned. And um, they align at a pivotal point because she is one of the most sought after advocates, victim advocates along the Mississippi Gulf Coast and beyond. And you, part of my story is my first marriage and some other relationships, there was some abuse. And so she and I connect on that level, but most of all, we connect as sisters in Christ and women who love to empower other women and provide human capital. Dr. Jerry is a dynamic speaker and author, entrepreneur, and life coach known as the empowerment advocate. This retired Air Force veteran impacts many around the globe. She is bold. She is fierce. Her approach certainly has helped many individuals and organizations with her powerful messages and with her powerful advocacy of truth and healing. We welcome you today, this most sought after conference presenter, uh, conference provider, author, publisher, and she reaches so many audiences. So we are certainly glad that she's here on the all reaching the audience here. Welcome, Dr. Yolanda. Thank you, Katrina, for having me. Thank you so much. So today, as many people know that it's this month is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And I am so grateful we got you on before the close. You mm -hmm. and I have discussed offline um, because we have a heart and passion and we serve people in domestic abuse, sexual assault, um, and those type of scenarios and situations. So we know and we have heard amid COVID-19 that it has only escalated and we, we know the record. We know during holidays, um, special occasions, things, things begin to escalate. Right. And so we had your colleagues, Charlotte Broadwell Brown, as well as Stephanie Piper earlier, earlier this month. So they talk, talked a little bit well, they talked a lot about um, some of the issues amid COVID-19. What can you share concerning those, um, the situation with COVID-19, the escalation, and how as a community, we can be better advocates for those who face sexual assault and understanding what sexual consequences consent is because we have to know and I believe um, Miss Piper shared in detail what consent is and is not but what does what do we do as a community to advocate that in our homes uh, teaching our young men and women um, teaching our community what exactly is consent well I'm glad you asked that question Katrina because sometimes people, really don't know what consent is when it comes to um, consenting to another person. And so, you know, for me, consent and for a lot of other people too that are advocates for sexual assault, understand that consent pretty much falls into four different categories um, that we have to know. And so when I say four categories, one thing we have to know is that consent has to be clear. Consent is an active uh, thing. Um, and so what I mean by that is it expressed through words and actions, of course, um, but both parties have to mutually understand the, per the permission given, right? And so consent is never implied and the absence of a no is not a yes, right? Because sometimes people say, well, if nobody don't say anything, then that means, okay, he or she must say, okay, it's okay to do this, right? Well, no, the absence of a no is not a yes. You know, silent is not consent. So sometimes you'll hear people say, well, I'm not sure, or I don't know, 
or you might hear him say maybe you know those are similar those similar phrases are not consent at all um so again if it's not clear then don't automatically assume that the person is actually willing to say yes to uh to sex or engaging in any type of thing like that uh the other thing is consent has to be coherent right and so what i mean by coherent meaning that people can't people who are incapacitated you know whether they're incapacitated by alcohol or by drugs they're not all mentally there right so they can't by right be able to tell you yes i consent to sex you know um and the reason i say that is because if a person had you know lacks the capacity to tell you to tell you who what when where why and how in any type of situation then they can't by right sit there and consent a yes majority of the time because they're not aware you know of the mental you know aware mentally of what's going on around them and sometimes you know you might hear people say well people who are asleep you know can consent no you can't consent to you know sex if you're asleep you know what i mean because sometimes you'll hear people be like well i'm in the bed and we're sleeping if a person touches me and they happen to move near me that gives me the green light to go ahead and have sex no that does not you know if a person is asleep or in another vulnerable position they cannot consent so again you got clear it has to be clear and a person has to be coherent the third one is they have to be willing right a person has to be willing means that they can't consent under pressure you know sometimes people try to pressure you know you want it you know you want to be with me you know you like me and all these different things well no that's basically pressuring somebody into sex and you can't pressure nobody to do that they have to still by right be willing to consent to sex um someone you know in an unbalanced power situation they cannot do that. They cannot consent to sex if you're forcing somebody to do something that's against their own free will, right? And then the last one is ongoing. So consent, what I mean by ongoing and consent, I mean that just because a person said yes today don't mean that they're going to always say yes the next day or hours later. You always have to ask for that consent. Consent must be obtained at each step of any type of physical intimacy from one person to another. You know, you can't assume that, oh, since we were on the couch watching TV, you know, we've engaged in this activity. Okay, now we're getting ready to go to the bedroom. The person still has to consent in the bedroom too. So you can't automatically assume because the person consented in, in the living room watching TV, next Netflixing and chilling. Now we're going to the bedroom and this person is going to automatically consent. So it has to be an ongoing thing. You have to always make sure that you're asking for consent, even in that capacity too, as well. So it has to be a clear, definitive, ongoing, um, in your right capacity, in the right state of mind, not enumerated by alcohol or drugs or anything like that. It has to be an ongoing, clear, definitive um, approval. Right. And they have to be willing. And so let me add one more thing in here, too. Um, sometimes people can get misconstrued. Okay. I mean, you're married, right? I'm in a relationship. And when people are in a partnership, sometimes they feel like since they're married, that's an automatic consent to whoever their partner is. But the truth of the matter is that's not the case. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you can run into this, even though it's a sexual assault awareness month, sexual assault is a form of domestic abuse, right? Yes, and so if a person is being coerced or a person is being pressured, or if a partner happens to be in an, in a, in an argument, you know, you, a lot of times you'll hear people say, hear people say in a relationship, well, you know, they make the, the best way to make up is to have sex. Well, no, that's the wrong answer. But, you know, you'll hear that. Um, but just because you are married to someone or you're in a relationship with someone doesn't automatically give that other person the automatic yes to be able to have sexual intimacy with that person. Again, you still have to have consent and have approval. Yes. You have inspired just as you're doing now with giving us a clear balance, a clear guidance of what consent is and isn't 
So you always inspire. You have inspired so many people along with um, what I call this part of your ministry. Right. Thank you. And that's to bring healing and hope to those who need to overcome or feel trapped. Um, so what do you tell those people who say, OK, I'm just trapped in this relationship, um, this toxic, abusive relationship? You also empower people to live out their dreams. So it's a two step loaded question. How can you uh, minister to that person who just say, I am so trapped. This is so far gone. I don't know if I can make it without him or her. And then on the other side, letting them know that there's a God sized dream in them. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something, even if it's unclear to them, God will reveal it. It's in them because he, he created everybody for purpose. That's right. So please share the work that you do which, with helping people get out of those entrapments and also living out their purpose and empowering them. Okay, sure. So, um, yeah, you said that was a loaded question. So I'm gonna try to break it down a little bit. So um, with the, you know, the work that I do, um, sexual assault is just one piece of what I do. You know, I help um, victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, even the youth who've gone through bullying experiences. Um, and so when I am talking to someone who has been a victim of any of those traumatic experiences, the biggest thing I do is listen, right? You have to be an effective listener in order to understand what a person is going through um, and not be so apt to impose your own feelings on another person or how you feel about something. So basically listening to what they have to say, you know, um, and then if, if, if getting out of that situation is something that they truly want to do and they're ready to go, basically offering them resources. If you if you are serving in that capacity as an advocate or if so you're you know, a leader in a community, um, being able to help them, you know, let them know that there are other people out there. Let the person know who's trying to get out of that situation, that they aren't alone, you know, and basically show some compassion, have a heart, you know, because sometimes, you know, you'll have people who be in a situation where they'll be very judgmental. And one thing you cannot do with a person that's gone through sexual assault or domestic violence or anything like that traumatic is you cannot judge a person uh, because you don't know what you would do if you were in their shoes. And even if you were in their shoes, still, you still can't tell a person what they're going to do because their mental capacity at that point, they're still trying to figure it out. Um, so the best thing that I would say to anybody um, that's willing to uh, help someone is to listen, listen, show compassion, uh, offer help, you know, help instead of hurt um, and just give them the resources. If they don't have the resources, reach out to someone that does have the resource, resources. And I always tell people I, the way technology is nowadays, Google has everything. Like it's your best friend. All you have to do is type in sexual assault, type in domestic violence or whatever it is. And you'll have a whole slew of things that will pop up, you know, even just for your local area. And worst case scenario, the national hotline numbers are out there. They're easy, accessible. Um, and sometimes people, when they're leaving a certain situation, they don't be ready to call 911 right away. You know what I want to also let people know, and encourage them to know is that these hotlines and these shelters that you go to, they have strict confidentiality. So they cannot by right share anything of your identity, your information to anybody else besides what's, you know, what you've given to them, you know, between you and that, that organization. So and a lot of people don't know that, you know, and, and I'm learning, you know, as with me and my coaching, you know, and dealing with the people that I coach, you know, some of them are afraid to even go out and ask for help because for fear of the information getting out and somebody finding out about, you know, about what has happened. So mm -hmm. I just want to make that clear that they do have that confidentiality there. Um, so as far as that piece is concerned, you know, um, like I said, it's all kinds of resources out there. Have a heart, be an effective listener and just have a caring spirit and show mm -hmm. compassion. Um, as far as the things that I do um, in 
in my daily life, like you say, it's probably, you know, I do ministry. That's, that's exactly what it is. You know, um, I do, all, I do a lot of things from, again, I do a lot of things from the heart because one, someone was once there for me. You know, I was once that victim, right? I'm that survivor that's thriving now, but I was once that victim. And so for me to be able to, to give back without feeling like I have to make money or, you know, using this. Yes, I have a business, but a lot of times, believe it or not, everything that I that comes monetarily to my business, I pour it back out into the community, if that makes sense. You know, some people try to, to go, go into business to try to make money, you know, but money is not a factor for me. You know, like they say, you know, your blessings will come if you're actually doing the work, right? And doing the work for me is doing God's will. So if I'm out there doing the work in the community, you know, I'm not worried about no no money. I'm worried about helping people. You know, I'm worried about, you know, I'm out there worrying about being able to, you know, draw people closer to God, you know, and all those other things. Because I'm telling you, without God, I don't think I would have made it out of my situation. You right. know, because I had to, I mean, I had to get out my own head and just say, look, <laughs> drop down to my knees and ask God to help me, you know, so um just doing those kind of things you know i speak to youth groups you know at conferences churches you know last year i spoke to, at a few youth groups at churches you know nonprofit organizations um currently um i am a board member for the gulf coast center of nonviolence here in mississippi uh, but i also go there at least once a month and actually talk to the women's group you know, and and believe it or not, I love going there and talking to them. And I, the feedback I get, they love that I come there too. You know, but it just makes me happy knowing that I can actually serve in that capacity. You know, without any pressure. Um, the other thing that I do um, that many people really don't know about, so I'll go ahead and put this out there too. There's two other things that I do. Um, is again with kids, I am a mentor for. Um, a foster care kid through our church uh, small group, our orphan care small group. We oh. um, we have a program where we actually kind of partnered uh, with o OCJ Kids, Mississippi and Alabama, where we uh, partner with them to be able to, um, you know, foster parents deal with a lot, right? And so sometimes, you know, they're dealing with so much that sometimes there's still not enough attention for the foster kid because they're too busy trying to be a parent. So stepping in and being a mentor, we're able to, you know, help them and give that extra cushion for the parent, basically be that extra body to help them with whatever they need, whether it's learning how to fill out an application for a job or filling out an application for college or just being there, helping them in any capacity, going to their, their functions, you know, if they got cheerleading or football games or whatever. So, um, that's another thing that I've taken on within the past years, just being able to mentor to foster kids. Um, my daughter's in college now, so, you know, I don't have, you know, she's home now, but when she's away to college, it's just me. So I have that extra time to be able to devote to something like that. And then also just I have, you know, different groups that I've created um, just as support groups. You know, with uh, one of them is Voices Standing in Solidarity Against Domestic Violence. Um, the other one is a parentless support sister group. And then I have an I am saved group. And then, you know, um, just being a part of other individuals group just to be that support system for them. So I'm involved in a lot, but it's only because I have a willing heart and I love people. You know, I love people and I love God. So I try to serve in any capacity that I can as long as I am of able body. Thank you for that. Um, you are definitely, you embody uh, the heart of God to reach out to so many people. And so I'm certainly glad that you shared all of that. And so other people can know, hey, I can reach out to her for a multitude of things right. and to call upon you and to bring you into churches and to bring you in to mentor. Um, both of us have shared the honor of being on Glambitious cover. Um, and you have Grace, um, the cover. You have been a cover girl and a feature on many magazines and books, as well as you have authored books and articles. What is on the horizon for Dr. Yolanda, Jerry? What, what is, and I do know that some publications, if we're privy to, that information. I know some publications and some 
even um, and production, they don't let you share information until they have officially launched and their marketing has signed off, their marketing and other approvals have come. But anything that you can share yes. with us, we're privy to, please go ahead and share. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that you asked that um, because this is actually like the prime prime time to actually be able to share this, though. Um, and there's a couple of things. One of them was I think I'm not sure if you've seen it, but, you know, I was recently um, I recently shared my story of domestic violence on Shondaland.com. Um, yes. And Shondaland.com is basically the digital media platform for Shonda Rhimes. Right. Yes. So I'm like, wow, you know, I never in my life would have imagine to be asked i mean because literally i thought it was a hoax right when i got that email i really thought it was a hoax but to be asked to share my story on a major media platform like that is so humbling and it's such a blessing so if nobody's had the opportunity or nobody knows my story well you can just go type in my name and shondaland and it'll come up in a google search and you can go ahead and read my story from there at least part of it you know when it comes to how i got through my domestic violence abuse um years ago um the second thing is tomorrow well actually not tomorrow i take that back april 30th and may 1st i've partnered with kern cherry she's part of yeah. Pay connections uh, we've yeah. come together to put an event a free event on for people who actually want to join via zoom of course you have to re register on eventbrite but the name of the event is called together we stand right and so basically what this is doing is we have speakers and um panelists you know we have musicians basically what we're doing is we're want, we want to give hope support and a sense of community you know for everyone out there to let them know yes we're amid this COVID 19 we know the numbers are rising and some people feel alone but we still want to let them know that we're here we're here we're standing with you you know in solidarity we're here we we have the information we have the resources uh that we can actually provide to you if you need those resources uh two of our keynote speakers that we do have is gloria mayfield banks she is that top-notch mary Kay lady you know, in the mary Kay industry and then we also have emmy award-winning Aria McGarry, um, she's also one of our keynote speakers. And we have a few other people, you know, along the coast and abroad that will also be uh, on our panel, you know, giving their stories when it comes to being a survivor and just sharing resources. So hopefully we can get people to flood in, register on Eventbrite, uh, together we stand. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can put that information out in, people are encouraged and empowered by it. So that's what we have April 30th and May 1st. Um, as far as the next thing that I have coming up and I actually been, I've been trying to get through this, you know, I've been sitting on it, um, but I will be launching my own store online. It's called YJ Inspires Life. Um, it'll be a whole bunch of things in the store that's gonna just, basically, I mean, you name it, it'd be from quotes that I've not said, you know, some things that are inspiring on t-shirts, cups, mugs, you name it, um, just to be able to give, you know, stuff out to, to individuals, you know, because we, everybody has, you know, different, their different niche and their different things that they love. Uh, but for me, I'm all about empowering lives, right? You know, I, you know, advocating for truth, you know, people's healing, resiliency, all of those things. I'm a people person. You know, and if I can win, then guess what? We all can win. Um, so that's what's next on the horizon. You know, besides the uh, the event that we have coming up, it's just trying to launch my store. My birthday is next month in May, so I'm trying to get it launched before my birthday, or if not on my birthday, hopefully to get that launched out too as well. YG inspires life. Now you said something that's very important, and I want people to catch this. And I, this is a freebie. When you serve for God and when you serve, God, God will open some amazing doors uh, like the Shundaland when they contacted you. I was serving, uh, just serving, doing makeup, um, going to Jackson County Civic Center for the elderly, um, doing makeup for domestic violence survivors, um, rehab, all of that. And I got started getting hand selected mm -hmm. by the 
that time who was Haley Barber, then uh, some things with NFL ha started happening, ABC News, just things started happening and where people were reaching out to me and say, saying, you ought to go to hand selected premier makeup artists on the Gulf Coast. Now, you know, Louisiana is a huge industry and, and yeah. I, I'm not tooting my horn. I'm, I'm boasting in the Lord because That's I know there are very, very talented uh, makeup artists in Louisiana and Mississippi. And to be quite honest, some that can probably run circles around me. But right. I'm just telling you, when you serve, and I'm not saying that I'm the only one that, of them that serve God, but for me, God would tap me on the door. And there's been some things because of my other job that I have had to say no to and, and try to share other people. But when I tell you, serving opens doors that you wouldn't have even you couldn't have you couldn't have done it and sometimes people ask me who is your agent <laughs> right when i get an agent it, it didn't mesh for me but right. god being my agent and i i was like i need an agent i need an agent god has opened every door for me i can honestly say that so and when you consistently do something and you consistently put your heart in it and, and have the right motives. And I'm not saying we don't make mistakes, and, but I, I feel led to share this right there because when you said that, that was so powerful that Shonda Land, Shonda Rhimes uh, came tapping on your shoulder and said, you're something about your story. Now there's, I'm a domestic abuse survivor. There's other domestic abuse survivors, but she came and tapped on your shoulder and gave in the favor of the Lord opened up a door for you. So I celebrate that. And when I hear that, I celebrate. Thank you. And, and you've shared early on in this interview that it, it's not about the money. Um, your heart is to give and the money comes back and you wound up putting, and I am a witness. My husband like, okay, <laughs> what about the money? What you put back up? but my heart is, Hey, I could I could see it in another area, and and sometimes it's so in time, and mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to hear that about you. I'm excited, and and I'm you know I'm praying for something else, right? I know you are. You always are, just like I'm, I'm always trying to do. <laughs> Can we do a film production or a lifetime? film about your life dr yolanda jerry i'm going to go ahead and speak that <laughs> i hear you well you know what they say you know you, you got to ask what you for what you want you know and sometimes you got to ask for that in prayer go to god in prayer if this is something that's been laid on your heart you speak it forth right and you ask for it, you ask for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that's very true but that's true everything that i do um it comes from the heart and it's because God has pushed me in that direction, right? You know, sometimes we have to get out of our own way and our own thinking and just, just sit there and just let God talk to us and see what it is he want us to do. Because sometimes people be so quick to just move. This is what I want to do, what I want to do, what I want to do. But what does God want you to do? You know what I mean? So and sometimes when you move out of God's way, sometimes it could be overwhelming. You'd be like, well, OK, God, I, got, I I see you, but uh, you give me a whole lot here. You know, but guess what? I asked for it. You know what I mean? So if I'm asking for it, I have to be willing to openly receive it, too. And trust me, the blessings keep on coming and I'm going to keep on embracing it. Amen. Amen. Girl, you preach it up in here today. <laughs> so you've already given us words of hope. Just share some more words of hope and encouragement you would like to speak directly to that female or male who, again, feels trapped or doesn't understand their full potential because you are a testimony of not just surviving but thriving and walking in such great victory. And just let them know that there's victory on the other side. Can you, can you address them heart to heart? Yeah, well, what I want anyone who's going through a tough time to know is just realize that you are not alone. You know, we always feel like we're by ourselves, 
But truth of the matter is you're not alone. And even when you feel like you don't want to talk to someone else, talk to God. I'm telling you, he will give you everything that you need and that you ask for. All you have to do is just submit yourself and surrender and just be like, OK, God, I'm giving you the seat. I'm giving you the driver's seat. Now you go ahead and drive me where I need to go. But just know that you're not alone. If I made it out of sexual assault as a child, I made it out as domestic violence, you know, as an adult. I made it through my daughter being bullied in middle school. If I made it through all that, and then I made it through the loss of my father, who was like the person who I went to all the time when it came to, you know, uh, being uh, educated about the word and God and everything. If I can go through all that and still be standing, why can't you? So what I chose to do, and maybe hopefully it inspires and encourages somebody else, use all of that that you went through, turn your pain into your purpose. Take it and hold it and own it. You know, own it. Don't don't be don't be shame about it. Don't be upset about it. Don't be afraid about it. Embrace your past. You know, I always say, accept your past. One of my models is accept your past, focus on it now, impact the future. That's my that's my thing. Accept the past, focus on it now, impact the future. Because when you learn to accept your past, you can truly focus on what it is that you need to be doing for yourself, for your life, for your community and everybody else. You know, that way, whatever it is that you're focused on, the hope is that you'll be able to impact others out in the community too community too as well thank you so much i am so glad that the stars aligned <laughs> and god allowed you to come uh, and share your story and just walking in victory as you do every day and how you empower so many people i thank you so much and we're concluding with this interview and if there is anything you would like to share like your handles a upcoming book um you've already shared um on may the um i'm sorry april the 30th to may 1st you will have a conference um along with kern and yourself and the marvelous gloria mayfield banks and so many other people so just you know conclude with all of your handles your website everything all right so um, my website is uh, www.iamyolandajerry.com. You can follow me on all social media platforms, on Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. My handle is YJ Empowers, just like I empower life, right? So YJ Empowers. And then, like I said, if you really want to know what I have going on, just Type my name in and then Google search and just you'll get to see everything that I've done up to this far. So if that would be any encouragement, you know, for anybody to say, wow, she's went from this and now it's manifested to this. Right. Hopefully that can give somebody some encouragement. But yeah, my website, my handles, uh, I have books that's available to via my website. I also have one more book. I can't share the title of that just yet, um, but that'll be coming out hopefully in the next couple of months. Um, but just be on the lookout. You know, God has a lot of great things in store for me and I'm just enjoying the ride. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Yolanda Jerry. And that concludes the all for tonight. Bless everyone for joining us. We love you. Goodbye. And thank you for having me, Katrina. God bless you.